How do large animal populations change? Well, in 2000, if you added up everything I had in that chart, antelope, buffalo, elephants, hippos, everything, fewer than 1,000 of them combined. The census last year, 71,000. A little more than a decade. Several fold changes in most of those populations, from 100 elephant to maybe about 600, um, same, similar change in hippos, et cetera. Um, pretty dramatic, right? Well, the habitat's there. The food's there, the water's there, the place had been emptied by us, and now those populations are booming. I'm also going to share with you, uh, well, so I'll tell you, you may ask about the lions. Uh, at, at the 2015 count, there's 66 lions in Gorongosa, which is a little bit of a concern. The proportions of other things to lions are not what they are historically. And lions are tricky. You can't just introduce lions because, you know, the prides fight and things like that. But if you understand what I, as you understand from what I told you before, carnivores are really important in systems in terms of the whole regime of, of how animal numbers are controlled, particularly the smaller prey. And, um, and there were no, uh, just, just lions were the only known large predators, uh, no wild dogs, no leopard, etc. until three weeks ago. This is a shot from a motion capture camera. There's, place, there's, there's dozens of these cameras all over Gorongosa, and for the first time in decades, that's a leopard in Gorongosa National Park probably migrated in from one of the adjacent areas, and evidently uh, several more have been spotted since then. But this is, this is dated uh, September 2nd, and I got sent this photo by Greg Carr, somewhat excited that, a uh, little more than excited, um, that there are leopard in Gorongosa, and there are now a few leopard we know in Gorongosa, probably at least a breeding pair. So the carnivores are coming back, and diversity of carnivores is there. So it's quite hopeful 